this one, uh, if you guys kind of remember when we do uh, Dane's presentations, you'll have to kind of pin, I think you pin the one where your hand, your uh, drawing screen, I think, isn't it? So, yeah. So we, uh, you have basically Dane does two different screens. Um, he'll have his, his PowerPoint presentation and they also does the, um, the overhead projection one as well. And so I switched, I switched back and forth for the, for the recording side of things. And, uh, so just make sure you guys jump, jump between the two screens to blow it up. Otherwise you won't be able to see his, uh, his writings for the overhead. Screen. Actually, I, I did buy a digital, um, a digital drawing board because I, mm -hmm. I like to draw like on the side, like, um, just like for fun art, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, um, man, it just, it's, it's not the same as like a pen or pencil. I don't, uh, I cannot get a good feel for it. I've tried. I thought that'd be cool to have, you know, like a split screen or something, but yeah. 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 And yeah. I know there's the whole whiteboard thing. I, maybe we should try the whiteboard one of these times, but yeah, they have that option. But again, it's, I, I don't know. And then, you know, to draw straight lines or right. The, the number eight, you know, things <laughs> like that is just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, so maybe one day we'll figure something out. We can fire the moon, but we can't make a pencil feel good digitally. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I think we're good to go. Oh, I will get you. I'll read your bio for the 28th okay. time. <laughs> there you go. I, I keep getting shorter and shorter. I try to get it shorter. That's all right. Um, Dane began surveying in 2005. He received his uh, land surveying and training certification in 2007. Subsequently became professional land surveyor in the state of Maine in 2009. Dane is currently licensed in not only the state of Maine, but also Vermont, Texas, Colorado, and Oregon. In all, he has gained over 18 years of experience working in not, in not only many different states, but also many different survey disciplines. In addition to surveying, Dane has a passion for teaching, which is why he continues to be on mentoring. It is through his teaching classes for up-and-coming surveyors that he discovered the gap in available education materials. Over many months, Dane took pages and pages of teaching notes and incorporated them into a manual to assist further surveyors gaining the knowledge necessary to pass the NC's fundamentals exam. And the culmination of his work, the Fundamentals of Surveying Exam Study Manual, is available, and I'll throw that link in there as well. And uh, he also has the the video functionality that goes with it through the the WestFed as well. So I'll throw a couple of those things in the chat and uh, also on the website later. But as <laughs> always, Dane, we love you. Uh, we love you coming on here. All of uh, all the programs and different things you put together, and um, appreciate your time as always. Yeah, thank you very much, Trent. As always, and um, about the manual, I. I am in the middle of um, revising it right now. I, I'm adding actually what we're about to go over. I'm adding um, a new chapter in there and things that I've noticed or people have pointed out um, through Amazon reviews and all that kind of stuff. So I've been trying to clean that up. Um, and it's pretty cool to learn to learn things, kind of like the uh, the question you just posed about intersecting lines using the law of signs, you know, and yep. he's right. That is an option. You can do that, you know. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll when I find time, I'll try to respond to that one. Um, but yeah, the new edition three of the manuals coming out here pretty shortly. I, it's already done. I just ordered ordered them, and um, I'm gonna see what they look like before I volunteer them out to the masses, you know. But so. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me. And I guess we'll get right into it so we can get through it. Um, one thing that someone corrected me on is I was calling this section six breakdown, but someone said, nope, it's not a breakdown. That's, that's for subdivisions. You're, you're not subdividing this, you know, I was like, oh, I guess you're right. <laughs> Technically, you know, so I've changed it to a uh, section six calculations. Cause that's really what it is. Um, so I'm going to briefly go into how section six is generated first, how, how it's produced, I guess. 
Um, I'm gonna try to get to that that uh, through that first part really quick because um, that's really um, not why we're here. But once section six is established, then we'll start going to the calculations. Um, so let's get there first. So when you work in PLS system, um, you're going to generate your principal meridian and your baseline, and then you're going to do your quadrangles, which are your 24 mile offsets. You're going to create these big, huge quadrangles. Each quadrangle will hold 16 townships. Um, and then those townships are further broken down into sections. So what we have here is a picture, the black, big, big black square is a township and it's broken up into your 36 sections. Um, so by the time they've got to this stage of breaking down the, the, the public land survey system in an area, by the time you get to this big, thick black township line, that's what you have to work with. There's no going back. Every step up until this point had to be considered um, finalized, done, and perfect. Um, I don't want to say perfect, but it is what it is at this point, okay? There's no going back because if you change the perimeter of this township, then you have to change the perimeter of the township next to it. And then you're going to be changing the one next to it. And then you're going to be changing the quadrangle. Um, so it just keeps going and going and going. It's a chain reaction. So that's why they've made the assumption that what they've done in the previous steps is solid. It's set in stone and there's no changing it. So let's pretend that's where we are at this situation. Um, this black township line is set in stone and there's no going back and changing it. We have to generate 36 sections in this township the best we can at this point. So what they would do is they'd start at this southeast corner of the township. Um, and that point is already created. That was created in the previous steps. So they go back to this monument in the southeast corner of section 36, and they would walk along this south line of the township, which has already been created. Um, there's, no, there's no changing where this line is because that's where it is. So they start the southeast corner, they would walk one mile down the line that they've already created or the surveyors prior to them already created, and they would put a point right here in that line, um, one mile west, true bearing west from the southeast corner of, of the section. Um, then they would go one mile north, due north, um, true north. The intent is to be parallel with the township's east line. So they'd start here, they'd walk one mile, set a monument, go up one mile with the intent of being parallel with the east line of the section, they would set a temporary monument at this point, okay? Um, it's not permanent yet. It's just a marker. And what they would do then, would they would, they would walk one mile towards the east, true bearing east, with the attempt of hitting a, at exactly one mile, hitting that west, I'm sorry, the east, sec uh, east Township line right here. Once they do that, they're going to realize their error, okay? Um, if they're short 100 feet, then they know if, if they're too long 100 feet, they know they have to go back and move that temporary marker 100 feet in the direction that they're off, right? So if they walk this and they're at 5380, um, they know that this point that they put was 100 feet too far to the west. So they would walk back and they would move that, that marker 100 feet to the east and they would, they would set it. I'm sorry, 100 feet to the west and then they would set it. So they would run a random line and then they would true it out with a true correction line, okay? The intent is to have this line parallel with the East Township line and to have this line parallel with the South Township line. 
And then they would create these two lines, one and two. Now this is established. So then they would perform the exact same measure, moving their way up this tier. So they would do line three, temporary, check out, come back, set it at its correct location. Go up a mile, set a temporary, check out, come back, and correct it. And they would do that all the way up this first tier of, of sections, all right? Once they've reached section 11, I'm sorry, section one and complete the 11th line, then they would fall back down to section 35 and go in a northerly direction. So what they were doing is basically they're moving in a north and a west direction. And if you move in a northwesterly direction, you're going to end up at township six, uh, section six. Um, when they do that first tier moving north, all the error that has been accumulated in that northward and that northern movement, they're going to push all that area up into section one. The same thing is going to happen for this northern movement up this tier of sections. They're going to push all the error into section two. Because when they run that 11th line right here, when they, they're they hopefully going to go up a mile and close out on that north township line. But what if it's not? What if they're too short or they're too long? Well, the only solution would be to go back and change everything they've done in this entire tier, which was not an option. So what they have to do is accept that error either excess or deficiency, whichever it may be, and they're gonna push all the error into section one. Same thing with two, three, four, five. Also, error is also being pushed towards the west because they're moving in a northwestern westerly direction. So section 31 is gonna get all the error from the westerly movement, and it's gonna get pushed into section 31. Same thing with 30. 19, 18, 7, and 6. Well, as you can see, section 6 is going to get all the northerly error and all the westerly error, and it's going to cul culminate, culminate into section 6 right here, okay? So let's go zoom into that. Um, this right here shows um, what is occurring. Now, not only are we pushing the error into sections one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 18, 19, 30, 31. But we're going to further push that error into the north most quarter mile and the west most quarter mile for this tier right here. So the south half of section 31 and the south half of the north half of section 31, we're going to attempt to make them full half miles, um, sorry, full quarter mile and full half mile. So really, all the error is going to be shoved up into the northernmost quarter mile. And the same thing here. All the error is going to be shoved into the westernmost quarter mile. Of, of this tier of sections, all right? Um, Trent, I can't really see uh, comments, if you don't mind. Um, uh, if someone has a question or whatever throughout this process, yeah. just I'll, let I'll me know. If anyone's, yep. got, if, if anyone's got questions, y'all let me know. Yep, nothing yet. All right, so that's how we're gonna generate section six, all right? <clears throat> and as you can see, it's a double whammy. It's getting all the north error and west error. That's why it's a quote unquote problematic area, okay? So this is a zoom in of section six. And as we just discussed, the south half of section six, all this right here, it's gonna get its full um, half mile. Also, the south half of the north half of section six, all this, I mean, all this right here, this quarter mile strip, it's going to get its full quarter mile. It's this red area up here. That's where 
the error is going to accumulate. Same thing in a westerly direction. The west half of uh, the, the east half of six is mm -hmm. going to get its full allotment, and the uh, east half of the west half is going to get its full allotment. It's just this furthest east quarter mile that's going to get the error. So the red sections right here, that's where all the error is going to get pushed. Um, so the distance from here, from the east quarter corner to the southeast corner, that distance is going to be a half mile, a given half mile. The distance from the east quarter corner to this um, 16th right here, that's going to be a quarter of a mile. The distance right here, that's where it's going to vary. Now, this is um, what we're doing right now is a situation where the section is off um, a minor amount. There are some section sixes where you have to actually intrude into this south half of the north half right here. Okay. So the attempt is to push all the error in the last quarter mile. But if the error is so great that <laughs> um, it goes beyond that, it can cut, extend, the error can be um, compensated in this section right here. Okay. So um, what we're going to do today is those section sixes that are just slightly off. I just did a uh, project out in Oregon and um, the sections out there in this township I was working with sections uh, one, two, and three, the error they had. So it was like, um, I think it was three mile. The section was three miles long. Okay. Um, so the South half just got its half mile. The South half of the North half got its allotted quarter of a mile. And then this red section actually was like two and a half miles long. That that's how much excess they had. It was due to a um, donation land claim was the reasoning, but I'm just saying the, what we're looking at now is uh, just a minor change. Okay. It can be pretty drastic in some cases. It could even extend down down here, you know. All right. So before we get into the calculations, I want to go over this. I call it the one tenth area rule. Um, I don't know if it's a rule or not, so to speak, but I'll go over it with you. Not I have a quick example. So one chain is one hundred link. Oh, one chain is one hundred links, which is also four rods or sixty six feet. Um, the, a chain is an even breakdown of the mile. So there are 80 chains in a mile. And a mile is 5,280. Um, oh, that's an error right here. I got to change that feet. Um, so, okay. So one acre is 43,560 square feet. So if you square root 43,560, you're going to get um, a square that is 208. 0.71 by 208.71. So one acre of land is 208.71 feet by 208.71 feet. Okay, and we all know this. Now one chain, uh, one chain square would be one chain by one chain, which would be 66 feet by 66 feet. If you were to do the math on that, one square chain is 4,356 square feet, all right? Um, so if one chain by one chain is, is 4,356, 4,356 is one-tenth of 43,560. So if you keep your measurements in square chains and just simply divide it by 10, you're going to get the acreage. And this was all done on purpose. This is the whole reasoning for using a chain as the breakdown of the PLS system. Um, 
So in this example, I'll show you through an example. That's how I learn. All right, let's take uh, this square right here. We have a square that is 20.12 chains by 20 chains, okay? If we use the simple one-tenth rule, you just do 20.12 chain times 20 chains equals 402.4 square chains. If you divide that by 10, you get your acreage, okay? And to prove it out longhand, if I convert these chains to feet, the answer is going to be the same. So 20.12 chains times 60 feet, 66 feet is 1327.92. And 20 chains times 66 feet is 1320 feet. So this square right here is really 1327.92 feet by 1320 feet. If you multiply those two together, you get this number. If you divide that by 43,560, then you get your acreage. And notice the acreage is the same, all right? So again, if you keep your measurements in chains, multiply them out, just get the area of, of, your, of your shape, multiply them out, divide that amount by 10, you're gonna get the equivalent in acres, okay? Does everyone understand that? All right. Um, so we're going to do this through an example, all right? When we look at the GLO plat, they're going to provide you the record distances, and they're going to give you the acreages of these altered uh, of of these uh, lots, all right? So out of all this information that I'm giving you, the GLO plat is really just going to provide you the record bearing and distance in chains for each side of your section. And it's going to give you the red numbers or the acreages of these lots. All right. The goal here is to generate the lengths of all these squares. So how do we go from this provided overall section length? section line length and acreages to generating all these question marks. That's the goal here, okay? All right, so given what we just discussed, um, some of these question marks should be very easy to generate because if you know the, the rules, then you know that this south half of section six is going to get its allotted half mile, all right? Regardless of what the section length is, the section distance on this north line, it doesn't really matter because you will be getting this south half of section six will get its allotted half mile. What happens over here is going to, um, that's that's what's going to happen with all this error being pushed in a westerly direction and northerly direction. So we know if the distance from this north quarter to this northeast corner, we know that that distance is going to be one half mile, a flat even one half mile or 40 chains. The whole section's 80 chains supposedly. Well, the half of it's going to be 40 chains. Well, if from the north quarter to the northeast corner is 40 chains, we also know that that's going to be split in half for these two lots. So this question mark and this question mark are going to be 20 chains. We don't have to do any math or anything. We know that these are going to be 20 chains. The same rule applies for this question mark and this question mark. So just knowing the rule that the easterly half of section six is going to get its allotted half mile no matter what gives you these four values. The same rule applies for these four values. The rule says that the south half of section six will get its allotted um, half mile. The same thing. If this is 40 chains, Half of 40 is going to be 20 and 20. And the same thing occurs here and here. So again, without, it, without doing any math, we've already solved 
eight of the question marks. Okay. Everyone see that? All right. Without doing math again, I've already stated that the east half of the west half of section six, that quarter mile strip, is going to get its allotted quarter of a mile. So we know that this question mark right here is going to get its full 20 chains. The same thing goes right here. Now, the south half of the north half of section six also gets it gets its own um, quarter of a mile. So these two lengths we know are going to be 20 as well. And again, that's just from knowing the rules, no math applied. So now we've solved, um, what is that, 12 of the question marks, right? So now all that we're left with is really this one right here. So not only is all the error pushed into section six, but it's also pushed all the way up into this lot of section six, all right? This is where we have to start using math. All right, so we've solved all the purple values simply by knowing the rules. East half gets what it needs. The east half or the west half gets what it, it's supposed to get. The south half gets, gets what it's supposed to get. And the south half or the north half gets what it's supposed to get. So we've done all the purple just by knowing the rule, okay? So now we're left with these six values here that we're trying to figure out. So how do we go about solving those? Um, okay, let's take this tier of lots right here, which would be the westernmost tier of lots. Um, to solve this north portion up here, okay? See this record distance? The surveyor said from the northeast to the northwest corners, the distance was 77.75 chains. Well, we know we've given 20, 20, and 20 away already, right? Well, if that's the case, all you do is you subtract 60 from 77.75, and you're going to have left over 17.75. This number can be greater than 20 or it can be less than 20. And that depends on the excess or deficiency in the error from the survey all the way up to this point. But to, sur to solve for this value, all you do is you subtract 60 from that line's overall length because you know you've already given 20, 20, and 20 away of it, right? Okay. To solve... For this distance right here, the same thing. You take the whole south line distance, which was 77.87 per the record. You've already given away 40 and 20, so you've given away 60. So 77.87 minus 60 leaves you with 17.87. So the error that occurred in this section specifically was a deficiency. The section six is smaller than it should be, okay? So now we have, in this westernmost tier of lots, I have the north line solved for, and I have the south line solved for, all right? Now we got to go through, and we got to solve these remaining three lines, one, two, three. So how do we do that? Well, if you look at my paper, I'm going to draw what we have here. I'm going to draw it drastically um, to show the point. But what we really have here is something that looks like uh, that. Okay. It's a lot less slight than this. However, um, this is what we have on a drastic level. Okay. And we have this value, and we have this value. 
I were to go to a point midway between here and here, and a point midway between here and here, the length of this line right here is going to be the average of these two lines. If this was four, uh, if this was six, and this was two, right? Six plus two is eight divided by two, that this would be a four foot long line, okay? Well, the same thing goes with 17.75, and 17.87. You take that line length, 17.87 plus 17.75, average them out, and now you're gonna get you're gonna get the length of the midway line right here. And that's what I did to solve for letter A. I took the north, uh, the 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 south end of it, added the north end of it, divided by two, took the average. Now I have a line in the middle that's 17.81 chains, okay? That's how you solve for A. The same, if that rule applies, then why wouldn't this apply? Now you're gonna do a line halfway between this point and this point right here, and a line that is halfway between this point and this point right here, well, if this was 17.81 and that was 17.87, you add them up, divide by two, find the average, and now you're gonna have the length of this line. So, but you can't do that until you get the midway line done first. That's why it has to be in this order. A, then you can do B or C, but you have to do A first, okay? So now we know we find, um, the south end is 17.81. The north end is 17.8. Uh, I'll skip one. 17.77. Um, so now I know this one is 17.78 chains. And the same thing here. Line midway, midway. I know this one and I know this one. The average is going to be this one, which is... Um, 17.84, okay, chains. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, laborious. However, it's very simple math. You're just averaging out, okay? So again, halfway between here and here, you're going to create this line. The length of that line is going to be the average of the two northernmost lines. Then you just break it up into two halves. You do the same thing here, and you do the same thing here. So now we've generated the three distances for these question marks here. So the, the westernmost tier is almost complete, except for this point right here. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing the same method for the north tier. The shape of this thing, I'm gonna draw it drastically, is like this. This end was 20 chains, this end is 20.05 chains, all right? And we got these distances by looking at the record length of the west line and the east line of the section, subtracting 60 chains from it, and whatever's left over, it gets pushed up into this area. So looking at this side, 20 chains, that tells me that the surveyor thought the length of this line right here, the, the east line, not the west line of our section, was a flat 80 chains, and sure enough, he did. Over here, the surveyor thought the east line of our section was 80.05 chains. Um, so this, this tier, this one had a deficiency, but the northern tier of lots has a excess, an excess, okay? Well, we're gonna solve for these three lengths again. Solve for the first one first. 
um, the, the middle one first. Take the two in lengths, add them up, divide by two, find the average. That'll generate this length right here of 20.02. Now that we have that, split it in half. We have 20.02 on one end, 20.05 on the other. Average them out. We're going to get this length of 20.04. I did some rounding here. And then we're going to do the this half over here. We got 20.02 and a 20. So this length will be 20.01. Okay? Again, simple averaging. Does anyone have any questions on that? So what we've done now is we've solved for every single um, length of all these lots of excess, excess and deficiency in section six, okay? And all we needed to do that was the surveyor's record length of those section lines. Okay? I have a question. Yeah. So another way to do that would be like, if you're looking for F, it's area plus area divided by four. And you can compute letter F without computing letter D. Area, uh, could you say it again? Area of Area what? plus area, so 35.54. Yeah. Plus 40.03, oh. divide that by four. Yeah, yeah, that would work too. So that's um. another quick way to do it. So, trying to think why that, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're doing by fours because those areas are generated by squares, right? So you're right. gonna have to, do, right. Yeah, so, so he's that, saying if you, if you add up 35.54 plus 40.04, I'm gonna do it to prove it. So we got 35.54 plus 40.03 equals that divided by four. Uh, let me see, 35.54 plus 40.04. And then what, what'd you say to do? Then divide. you divide by four. Yeah, that, it's not working. Wouldn't yeah, I don't get it. Less than 20. Yeah, it comes out 1889. No, um it should work yeah, though cuz we know uh yeah, you would let me think. It's the dividing by 4 part is what's is what's messing us up. We're we're thinking should, squaring. Maybe if you take the those square root be square uh, square root of each Find the average of the square root of each. That might work. Let me try that. 35.54 square root plus 40.03 square root equals. No, that's not going to work either. It works on letter D. We come out basically the same. On letter D? Yeah. 40.03 plus 40.06 divided okay. by 4. What do you get? Should be 20.01. 20.02 20. 20. is what I got. Yeah, that's Two, probably... Two, five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that is that is right. Um, I do it both ways. I do it your way, and I do it my way, and I find out that's my double check usually. Well, and the way sometimes I'll average them even further if I feel like it, but I, no, I like you're... to do a double check on mine. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. I... And uh, I'm sure uh, the next step that I'm about to go through is double checking it with the acreage. I do it a little bit differently, but I'll show I'll show you how I do it. Um, I'm gonna have to look further into this averaging. I I want to figure that out. I, I um. One of my guys at work during our study lesson, he brought that up, and we made it work. I forget how if, I did it. If I, if I could throw in a comment here, I think the reason it works on those other two and not on that first one is because the other two 
are or both, similar are, are both 20 chains wide so the regular 20 20 chain width ones when you do it with the the northwest of the northwest of section six that's not a 20 chain wide quarter quarter section because it's a fractional one so you don't have that exact same relationship there <clears throat> because you're assuming 20 20 chain wide quarter quarter sections uh, so yeah. Yeah. and yeah, this in that case it's not a 20 chain wide it's only 17.78 chain wide it's totally irregular yeah it's a, it's a, it's a regular it's, it's not the same width all the way across the first three are the same widths the last one is not the same thing would happen as you're going north along those quarter quarter sections. The first three are 20 chains. The last one is the fractional one caused by the area being pushed from the south. Right. So that's why that area plus area divided by four doesn't work. It would work because what you're doing is if you look at the northwest, the northwest quarter, the northeast quarter, you've got 20.5 plus 20.02 to get the first one area then you take 20.02 plus 20.05 uh, whatever it is five whatever yeah. for the second area you're actually adding all four of them so that's why when you divide by four you get the average uh, okay it's much easier yeah. this way with the proportioning of the distances going half, half and all that kind of stuff. That way you don't get as confused with respect to that because that's a consistent rule. Whereas the quarter of the two areas added together only works with a nominal 20 chain wide quarter, quarter sections. Yeah. So it would work for E, D and A and B, and but B, not necessarily yeah. C and F. Right. Okay, um, but I am going to go and show you how to check with your area because that I also like to double check too. I don't know who posed that question or comment, but uh, thank you. Um, also, want it before I move on. Um, you see how I'm draw how I drew this tier and I drew it drastically with it smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom. I like doing that because. Now I can visually see, just like this blue shape down here, you can see and check yourself, make sure that these distances are working out. The bottom should be the largest, the top should be the smallest, and then they should get progressively smaller as you move north. So I got 17.87, 17.84, 17.81, 17 17.78. So I'm progressively getting smaller as I'm going up, and that's how it should be. Same thing here. I drew this shape out drastically. Now I can look at it visually, and as I move towards the west, I should be getting smaller. So this distance should be the largest. It is. Then I get smaller and smaller and smaller until I get to the smallest. Okay? So um, this is just a trick that I do in my head. Because if you don't draw it this way, if you draw it a box and you start getting some distances that, uh, you know, larger, uh, one, two, four, three, five, something like that, you wouldn't know um, to look for it. So this is just a trick that I, I wanted to bring up and mention. Um, whenever you're doing your calculations, just have it in your head that it should progressively get larger or smaller as you move in the direction you're moving okay just a little uh hint all right so we've generated all of our lengths um and again we did that simply by looking at this top um at, at the section's length from this number right here 77.75 i i'm able to tell you we have a 20 20 20 and then 60 minus that number, that's going to be that one, okay? Um, 20, 20, 20, and then we'll figure this one out with the Western tier. So that's the process that we use. All right, um, now let's start checking ourselves with um, our acreage. So the Northwest of the Northwest, 
So I have a shape. And again, I try to draw the shape out how it really looks. So I have small, big, let me let's do it two directional. And then small, big. Um, I know this is drastic, but this is really what it looks like, okay? This is smaller than this line. This is smaller than that line. So if I go from midpoint to midpoint and midpoint to midpoint, um, this length right here, we just did it in the, in the previous step. This length is going to be the average of this line and this line. This length is going to be the average of this line and this line, okay? So I can generate the length of that line and the length of that line, and that's what I need to do. Um, so let's generate this one right here. I know this top line is 17.75. I know the south line is 17.78. Average those two out, and I'm going to get the length of this midway line, the east-west midway line, as 17.765. I'm going to do the same thing with this north-south midway line. I know the length of this line right here is 20, and I know the length of this line is 20.01. Average those two out, I get the length of my midway east-west line as 20.005 chains, chains, okay? So now I have my two lengths of my midway lines. If I multiply these times each other, I'm gonna be, I should get the area of this shape because I took the average of this east-west line took the average, I'm sorry, north-south line, the average of this east-west line. If I average the, these, all four of these out to get, to generate these, that times that should give me the area of that shape. So let's do it. 17.765 times 20.005. You get three, five, 5.3888 square chains. And from our rule, we know, um, yeah, from our rule, divide that by 10 to get acreage, right? If we do that, it'll be 35.53888 or 35.54. And that does check out with the area that the GLO plat provided us, okay? Does everyone see how I did that? Anyone have any questions? It's the exact same method as we did here, but I'm just applying it inside of this shape here. That line plus that line divided by two will give me the length of the line halfway between them. Just like that, this line, plus this line generated a halfway line between them, okay? Um, a, you got a question in there in the comment? Uh, uh, let me go see. I'm a little confused. Do this, calcula uh, do this calculation have to be done? Okay, Um. no. We're gonna, I provided you measured for later on. You're not gonna get measured on the GLO plat. You can scratch these from the image that I have here, okay? They're only going to give you the record distances. We're going to have to use, where I generated this measured, um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Don't, don't worry about the measure at this point, okay? Again, on the GLO plat, you're only going to be given acreages and the overall length of each of the section lines, record lengths in chain. And from that information, you're able to generate all this other stuff. Um, yeah, one more. From Mr. Will. What does he say? 
Oh, um, what about when the GLO field note measurements change and averages don't match those shown on the plat? Then you're screwed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so the measurements don't match the sh what's shown on. So you're saying the field book and the um, and the plat conflict. Yep. Well, That's what he's saying yep. Yep. Um, the uh, I might put my foot in my mouth here. Um, per the rules of construction, let's say that happened with a legal description. Let Let's say you had a subdivision called Happy Acres. All right. And um, you have a legal description that doesn't just say. All right, let me draw it out for you. So you, here's Happy Acres. You have a road running through it, and you get all these lots. All right? And you are surveying this lot right here. And that lot is lot three, block two of Happy Acres, okay? Instead of the legal description for that plat just saying lot three, block two of happy acres it doesn't just say that let's say it it provides a bearing and a distance meets and bounds around this thing so it's going to say found found monument at the northeast corner thence 100 feet to a um, iron rebar thence south 130 feet to a rebar thence um west to a rebar then north 130 feet back to the point of beginning okay well what i would do if i was given this this legal description uh, first thing i would do is go find happy acre subdivision because the dimensions stated on that plat are going to hold over the bearings and the distances in that legal description why would that legal description have any more validity than the subdivision plat if all the lots were all based on the plat itself what if there was an error in that legal description instead of saying 130 feet south it said 138 feet south okay well then you go find the subdivision plat and the subdivision plat clearly states 130 feet well this the property down here is not going to be shorted because of the legal description. The true meat and bones of that legal description is lot three, block two of Happy Acres. And the reasoning is, is because you're supposed to go back to that plat and refer to the bearings and the distances and measurements and angles on that plat as opposed to its legal description. Okay. So I would assume the same thing would happen with these legal, with the, uh, plat versus the field notes with um the survey um i'm open to uh discussion on this too if you guys want but i would refer to the glo plat as opposed to the, the field notes jerry you have any comment on that or george or anyone in theory right the plat's designed off of the field notes but that would be yeah and the plat should be the official recorded document. And I don't know if Tasha would be able to unmute real quick, but uh, the well, kind of the, the official BLM yeah. stance on that. But I don't, I am a BLM surveyor. I don't yeah. know if you want to go so far as to say that my response here is the official BLM response. You got it. Understood. Um, so Good disclaimer. Dis <laughs> we'll add to the discussion. Uh, so the principle here, when we're talking about GLO field notes, I'm going to step in the other room. I don't know if you guys can hear that water going. No. Um, so the uh, the principle when you're referring to GLO records, um, especially the older records, is uh, when you have a discrepancy between the field notes and the plat, it's actually the field notes that are going to the governing document. Um, the, wow. So that is... That that's the principle, but let me keep going here. And the reason why that exists is, is because um, 
the way that the records were produced is that typically the surveyor, the, the signing surveyor would have produced the field notes or would have at least done the draft um, that would have gone into the office and then transcribed for the official field note record to be done. The plat itself was created by draft people based upon the records, uh, the field notes and the sketch diagrams of the GLO surveyor. So that's why the standard answer is that the field notes govern over the plat. Okay. Um, however, when we're talking about parenthetical distances, which is what we're talking about today, they were never measured in the field by the surveyor. They were created as, a per, as doing the record. Um, so that's why it, it gets a little bit uh, sticky when we're talking about um, especially parenthetical different parentheticals. And so you, the, the, the actual practical answer is use all of the evidence that you have combined, um, especially you know, if we're talking about uh, GLO records, you might want to search for the original uh, records and also maybe the duplicates and the triplicates, even if you can find them to see if there might be any uh, more clues to solving the puzzle that way. That and makes what, total sense. Like, and I, and I'd say the last disclaimer, right? Reach out to your local cadastral okay. surveyor for help. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. I, have I, I have compared uh, the record, uh, the original plats and notes to the uh, copies that, that you can get through the GLO office. And I have, I have found differences between them. Uh, so the ones that are the original ones, which are generally in the state repository, is the one that you want to go to. And I agree with what you were saying about the notes, because the notes are where it's compiled. But I would also have a tendency with the parentheticals to still go back to the notes, because the parentheticals are protractions based on the numbers that were generated from the notes. So again, you're looking for tracking the notes information into that plat to see how the parentheticals were created. Right. No, I, yeah, I. <laughs> One question can. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there, there, ain't, there ain't no clean answers to these. No, it's it's like I, so I always tell my students the answer is it, it depends. depends. <laughs> yeah. It depends. Yeah. The, only, the only answer there is in surveying. It depends. Uh, yeah, it that, depends. Uh, and that that explains why all of us drink. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, there no, you go. We, uh... Well, that, that's a convenient explanation, George. Yeah, we'll go with that. And I do like yeah, I, uh... I like Ryan's answer. They were fending off hostile Indians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, like the rule for non-survey i mean non uh public lands is you know the plat is going to hold over the legal description per individual lots but that's probably because the surveyor signing surveyor did both the field measuring and the platting at the same time and what what tosh is saying is that um it was two different people you know well, that's that could partially be true, but also the thing you got to remember is that in the PLS, the the, the lots weren't the the sections weren't officially created until the plat was accepted and and right and that had to happen as the end of the chain of the record uh, field notes being submitted in addition to the plat. So the notes and the plat are actually part of the process of creating those sections. In a subdivision, the only document that you have that creates those lots is the subdivision plat. Right. You don't have the notes and you don't have access to the notes. So you're counting on that plat being a true representation of what the surveyor did out in the field and represented as the final product. So, so we yep. don't have that trail back to the notes in the subdivision plat like he did that was built into the public land survey system. Right. Right. And in this discussion made uh, George go refill his wine glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All right. 
So I'm a I hope screwdriver. I don't know if you can see it or not, but <laughs> I hope that answered your question. Uh, was it William? Yeah, yeah. Will, Will jumped in. Okay. Will jumped in. And said awesome, awesome answers. Okay. Um. So that's how we. That's how I check against the northwest. The northwest. Now, all the others are a little bit easier. Um. All the rest are a little bit easier because we have straight up distances um, on each end. So we only have to average out the north and the south for this tier. And we only have, have to average out the east and the west for this tier, all other than the northwest, the northwest. So the math behind this one to solve, to check for this would be 17.78. Um, plus 17.81 divided by two equals 17.795 times 20, because it's 20 on both sides, the average of 20 plus 20 is 20. And you're gonna get 355.9, use the um, one-tenth rule and you get 35.59 as the acreage. So all the rest are a little bit easier. Um, so that I would, use these acreages generated by the plat or uh, depicted on the plat to check out and make sure that my distances are matching up. Does that make sense? Um, and then, so we go through that process and then um, all associated areas and acres are depicted in, oh yeah. Um, and obviously if we're holding those 20 chains and 40 chains rules, the 20 chains and the 40 chain rule, um, all the acreages in this section here are gonna be even 40s, okay? And even 40 acres. All right, and then the last thing, just really quick, um, was what someone asked previously, record versus measured. Um, so, uh, we can always convert. So the surveyor back in the day thought it was 80.05 chains. We go out with new technology or whatever, and we're going to measure that line to be 79.88 chains. All right. So we have a, a difference here between what is stated, what is recorded, and what we're measuring. In order to generate the lengths of these lines per our new measured, we're going to have to use um, proration, right? We're going to have to set up a ratio in order to say, well, 40 chains per the old surveyor truly equals X chains per our new measurement. And if you follow this matrix right here, um, the record portion that you're trying to figure out divided by the record total of the whole line is going to equal the measured portion that you're trying to figure out divided by the measured total that you're trying to figure out. So let's take this, this length right here, okay? Um, the record surveyor thought this whole line was 80.05. He also thought that this line right here was 20.05. Well, the record total would be 80.05, this whole line. The record portion would be 20.05, this line right here. So now I've set up my ratio in order to create what we now are looking for. I don't know the length of this, but I do know what we measured for this whole section line and it's 79.88. So that would be my measure total. So now I have three entries in this matrix. If I cross multiply and solve for X, I can solve and tell you what the measured length of just this little portion is, okay? Um, that's why I've provided you the measurements um, throughout this whole process, but I just wanted to throw that in there, okay? Um, because what we've been working with and what we've been doing is all record distances. It's not actual on the ground measure distances at this point. We're gonna have to convert those to measure distances and you do it 
through this matrix, okay? Um, i show you the process right here. So we have the total distance per the record and the distance we're looking for per the record. And I set my ratio up and then I'll go in and I'll, now I have my measured total 79.88 from our GPS unit or whatever we're using and I can figure it out, okay? Um, that's all I have. Um, I'm willing to field some questions if y'all need. <laughs> I love your summary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you always want to ask what section your client's in before you take a job. That's for sure. <laughs> If you want to go back, get kind of uh, your last, go back there. Yeah, there you go. I was going to say the, the the last screen on your bottom one just kind of blew through really fast okay. there. There you go. Okay. Yeah. This one. Yeah. yeah. That one. And then the next one, it just kind of, it, it flew yeah. through the screen real quick. There okay. you go. There you go. Just so that some of the math. And then uh, yeah, I'll leave it up. I can throw, if you're willing to share this one, I can throw it in the uh, Dropbox as well for everybody. So yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it to you. Perfect. I'll throw that in the Dropbox for everybody to grab later. But there was, I found a mistake earlier. Where was it? Oh, uh, miles. The miles. Yeah. yeah. 52, 5280 miles should be 5280. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll throw that. Let me, uh, what's the Dropbox links? I will grab that right now. Uh, Here, let me, I'll give it to you um, right now too. Okay. So, uh, Copy Dropbox link. I'll throw it on the uh, the website and the follow up emails later. But okay, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I see John's comment, but that was to your summary. I think is that what that was to John? First question asked oh. section six. Yeah, love it. Um, all right, here it's coming your way. Okay, no worries. I'll throw that in there. Anybody got uh, specific questions? We haven't done this. We haven't done this for a couple of months, so it was. Uh, it's always fun. I love getting back into it. You could uh, disclaimer the heck out of anything with PLSS. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, so many before things. Every, before every talk I, on it, I always have to throw a caveat out there. Like this is. Textbook record, I mean, um, you know, textbook analysis of this situation. You know, this is how it's supposed to be done in a perfect world. But in reality, there's always something else that, that you have to consider, you know. There's no way you can always consider everything. So when's our next one, Trent? Um. In theory, it should be next Monday, but I don't have a topic yet. <laughs> I will have something ready before next Monday. Okay, I'll look forward to it. Uh, we should be good. The only, uh, at the moment, the only one I'm going to take off is um, October 9th, unless I can get somebody to uh, to uh, run it. I'm going to go do um, Grand Canyon rim to rim. So I will be uh, a little occupied that day. <laughs> yeah. You seem to run a lot. I'm... I'm a goofball. I am. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to drive that far, much less run it. <laughs> I did the Spartan over the weekend in Seattle. That was fun. Yeah, it looked like you had a good time. I feel like a, I feel like a muddy mess, but it was fun. It's always fun. Anybody got uh, any more questions? We were... Uh, going back and forth with uh, Rich had sent me an email saying he was doing some follow-up ones and we never really get a lot of dialogue at the end. Oh, look at, is it, <laughs> what's he doing? Yeah. Yeah, this is my, this is my son, Reese. Hi. Hi. Future surveyor. Hopefully he says so either a surveyor or a cop. So we'll uh, see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Show him your arm. He just broke his arm. Yep. Oh, no. How'd you do that? Bike riding. Uh, oh. A triathlon. <laughs> there you go. Bike riding on the triathlon. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. 
All right. Well, if nobody has any questions, Dane's got to feed him. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I love it. I love everybody's input. Uh, thanks for the uh, unofficial stance, Tasha. That was awesome. I love it. And Yeah, uh, that was really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, yep. So um, and I'll I'll be back to do single double proportioning. Uh, I think it was like uh October ninth yeah. or something. Like that. Um I think we did yeah, the night uh, I think the sixteenth, because I knew I was gonna be gone the night. So they okay. were on the sixteenth. Yep. So. All right. Sounds good. I don't have a question, but just something to use for, for marketing purposes when you're talking with clients that say they can get an eight hundred dollar <laughs> cert boundary survey down the street. <laughs> Just tell them that, hey, the most expensive survey is typically the cheapest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Later on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Good stuff, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, good seeing y'all. Trent, haven't seen yeah. you since the conference. I've been slammed, but uh, it's glad to be tying back into these. This is good. Thanks, yeah. Dane. I love it. Yeah, thank y'all very much for everything. Awesome. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Um, the roundtable Tuesday that was this month and then wisdom Wednesday started last week. Those, uh, those are both, uh, up on their websites as well. So roundtable Tuesdays.xyz wisdom Wednesdays.xyz as well. So, um, those are up for watching and then, uh, wisdom Wednesdays back next week too. So for cha uh, chapter two, so. All right. Can we do whiskey Wednesdays? I guess Just I'll kidding. do it any day. <laughs> it's every day. Have a good one, guys. Right. Have a good week. Bye, guys. Thank you all. Thanks, Dane.